Hi everyone, welcome to Paint Night. I'm going to go over the supplies that are in the kit for this painting project. You should have a copy of this example painting. You should also have this outline in case you want to just trace that instead of making your own composition. You should have some watercolor paper. You should also have this scrap for testing out your colors. And you should have two brushes, a round size six and this little detail brush. You should also have your paint set with six different colors on it. I'll be using this one, it's a bit messy because I used it before and I don't like to waste paint so I'm gonna keep using it for today. Some things to have by your side that will be helpful. A pencil, if you have painter's tape, you can grab that. I used that to make this white edge on the painting. Washi tape would also work. And not absolutely necessary, but if you have a blow dryer, that will help speed up the drying process when we're doing a big wash of color. The first thing I'm gonna do is demonstrate some techniques. So for this, we use some wet on wet painting and some wet on dry painting. So I'm gonna start with the easier one, which is wet on dry. I'm just gonna grab some paint. So wet on dry is when you're just direct, directly painting on the paper. You're not worried about blending or anything. So this is for detail work. So on our painting, that would be the stems and also the black spots on the flowers and the seed pods. So wet on wet painting is a little bit different and there are a couple of ways you can do it. The first one is to just put some water on your paper and then grab some of your paint and drop it in. You can either fill the whole space in with paint or you can put a couple of different colors together. So I'm using water again. I'm gonna grab this darker yellow. So there's that. And then I'm gonna add some red. And then I'm rinsing my brush off and I'm just gonna blend them here. Okay, and another thing you can do is a wash. So this whole background is done using a wash. That's a little bit more difficult. You need a lot of water for that. So what you want to do is keep your paper very wet the whole time that you're working. So when I'm doing a background, get as much water on the paper as you can. This is gonna be very light. So you can see the paper's kinda of shiny. There's plenty of water on it and you can keep adding water to it as you're working. For the background, there's a mix of really light yellow. I think I ended up dropping a little bit of red in there and there's some green down here at the bottom. So I've got a little palette here. If you have a plate or something similar, you can use that. Because the paint straight from your cart is pretty dark, I do water it down before I start using it. So adding some yellow at the top. It's hard to see because it's pretty light, so I'll make it a little bit darker. And then as you get to the bottom of this, I've got some of this shade, which is the Azo Yellow Deep. So 
So just dropping it in. I'm going to add more water here just to make sure that the next section is wet enough. You can also blend this together. I've got my azo yellow here. I'm going to drop in a little bit of red to make sort of an orangey red. And just drop that in. And then I've got a little bit down here. I'm going to add some more water. So the shapes here are these poppies that are just sort of faded in the background. So most of that is going to get covered up. You don't have to worry about whether it's accurate or anything. They're just blobs of color. And then near the bottom is where we have our green. So I'm going to get some of the sap green. I think this needs more water. So there's our wash. So again, just remember to keep applying water. Um, otherwise, you'll end up with streaks of color um, that don't blend together. All right. So the first thing we want to work on is our wash. For this, you want to make sure that you have completely clear water. If you've got water that's got some paint in it, uh, that'll affect the colors that you end up with. So use your larger brush and get the whole piece of paper wet. You'll notice that I've got a uh, painter's tape and I've used it to tape the paper down to the table. When you're using a lot of water, sometimes the paper will warp and kind of lift up in sections. So it helps to tape it down if you can't tape it down to your table. Um, something like um, an old yard sign or a clipboard, you can use that. Okay, so you can see how shiny this is, so there's a lot of water here. And so you want about the top two-thirds here to be a mix of kind of sunset colors, so yellows and pinks, and then the bottom third is going to be green. So I'm going to start with my lemon yellow. And it is watered down. And the paint always dries lighter than it looks when it's wet. So if you put it down and it looks a little bit dark, just remember that. I'm going to keep the lemon yellow all the way down to about here, and then I'll drop in some different colors. And if your paper starts getting dry, you can always just add more water as you go. You have cotton paper, so that tends to use a lot more water than other types of paper like cellulose. Um, with the cellulose paper, the water just kind of sits on the top and doesn't sink into the paper. Okay, 
Okay, so there's my yellow. It's a little light, so I'm going to just add in some more yellow in random spots. I'm going to get my sap green and start with that down here. I'm not putting it on it straight across because I don't want there to be a line here. Okay, my paper's still wet up here, so I'm going to grab some of this azo yellow medium. different spots. And this color I mixed earlier, which is lemon yellow and permanent red deep. I'm going to drop that, some of that, in a few spots. So again, this is to give you kind of these blurred flowers in the background. And you can put as many as you want. And you can see how wet the paper is because the color spreading out really easily. Another thing I'm going to do while the paper is wet is put in some stems. So this curved line here and here and here uh, just randomly along the bottom with sap green. So, um, I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. Alright, so that's plenty of green. I'm going to go back up here and add some of the deeper yellow. And you probably can't see, but the paper is starting to lift from the table, so it's buckling right here because the paper is so wet. A little bit more of the sort of coral color. Okay. So you can either allow this to air dry before we start working on the next part, or if you have a blow dryer, you can go ahead and use that. Um, you just want to make sure that it's not on high because it'll start you know, blowing everything around. So I've got the small one, so I'm going to use it on low, and I'm going to hold it from up here um, and not move it around too much. show you a few ways to make the poppies before we end up putting it down on our painting. So we've got them going in a few different directions. 
um, and it does take a couple of layers of paint to do them. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a pencil and we're going to do these. So I'm just going to sketch this out. You want kind of a bowl shape and then along the top you don't want it to be too even so you know you want it to look like there are different petals there. So there's one that's facing up. Now if you've got one that's hanging down, you'll do the opposite. So there's your bowl shape and then the edge. So we're going to start with that. <clears throat> I'm going to mix up a color. I'm going to get some of the Matter Lake and some of the permanent red. A little bit of the Azo yellow. That'll just make it more of an orangey red. But if you like, if you like this matter color, you can also do that. So for this, we fill in the entire space with paint. This is kind of a medium shade. But I do want the area at the bottom to be darker. So I'm going to touch my wet brush to the Matter Lake Deep. And the paint that I'm picking up is pretty saturated. And I'm going to drop that along the bottom. so that the bottom is darker. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And drop this here. <clears throat> and I rinsed my brush off. Now I'm just pulling this out with the edge of my brush so it's a little bit more blended. If you want, you can also drop in different shades at this point. So if you mix up different reds and pinks, you can drop that in. I'm going to mix more of a yellowy shade here with a permanent red and this azo yellow. And just drop a little bit of that in. Okay. So we're going to wait for this to dry, and while that's drying, I'm going to work on a different type of flower. <clears throat> so this one is very similar, but it's a little bit more split up, so you've got different petals here. So it looks just like these, except the bottom is not as smooth. So I've got one petal here. And then we've got a larger one in the middle. And we want to make sure that there's a space in between this one and the next one. Just a small space. And then we're going to do another petal over here, a smaller one. So the shade is a little more yellow than the last one. I'm 
trying to add some darker color to the edges just so it's not all the same shade and I'm gonna do the same here where all the petals meet <clears throat> and I've rinsed off my brush and I'm just blending that out Okay, last shape we're gonna do, I didn't do one of these on here, but I'm gonna show you how to make one anyway. Um, one that looks like it's actually opened up and facing you. So that'll be more of a circle shape. But you don't want it to be a perfect circle. And I'm also gonna mark a space here. So this is gonna be the center of the poppy. So we're doing something like this. So you just want to make sure that the edges, again, have some spaces, little V-shapes, to show where the different petals are. So here I'm going to start with a big petal. <coughs> make a little indentation. Do the same thing over here. There's another indent. center is a little off. Alright, so draw the center back in. <coughs> so for this one, I'm starting off with a light shade. Want the petals to have ridges so you kind of wiggle your brush around Before this dries, I'm going to get some darker color and drop it in all over. I'm just going to add some details to the edges because that one's a little flat. Just dropping in the permanent red deep, which is a little a little more of a yellow red. Okay. So now I'm gonna dry these off. Now I'm going to take my detail brush and finish these two off so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to make a deep red shade using the Matter Lake and I'm going to add a little bit of the Payne's Gray.
So it makes a really deep red. So I'm going to do is add a few stripes here <coughs> along the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Now you can either leave them as is or you can add a little bit more detail. So I'm going to grab a little bit of red and what we're going to do is add a little bit of color so it looks like the back side of the flower is showing through over here. You just want to make sure that you make it a little bit lighter. And you can even leave a little bit of white showing through if you want. Of course on your paper that's going to be whatever's in the background, whether it's yellow or green. And I'm just going to leave that one alone. So for this one, I'm going to grab a little bit of a deeper shade of red. And just add it here where the petals would meet and along the bottom. And then I'm going to use water up here. So we're just making the center area a little bit darker. And if you want, you can add a little bit of the darker shade over here. And rinsing off my brush and just using water to blend that. But when you do it, you want to be sure that you don't accidentally touch your brush to the center area, otherwise it will all just look like the same petal. Okay, for this one, I'm going to mix up some of the Matter Lake and some of the Permanent Red. And what we're going to do is just add some of the darker color. Now I can't see the center here anymore, but you want to leave a space for the center that we'll be adding later. So I'm going to draw it back in. And I'm just going to add this darker shade over the top of this. Now you want the lighter color to show through, so you don't want to cover it completely. So just leave some gaps. And then I'm going to take my detail brush and use Payne's Gray in the center. You just want to be careful that you don't touch the red because then the dark gray will bleed out into the flower.
Okay. So I'm going to dry this one off. So once that's dry, I'm going to use the Payne's Gray to add some details around the center. So just some dots. And then I'm going to make little lines connecting to the center. Okay, so now we are going to work on our painting. So you just need to decide what type of flowers you're going to do and where they're going to go. So I'm going to make one over here. It's that sort of half little bowl shape that we did earlier. And then I'm going to make one over here. You do want to leave space here because later on we're going to be adding some of these little pods. So you can fill your paper with flowers, but just remember we'll need a little bit of space for these. I'm going to do one of the big flowers here in the center. So in the example photo, I didn't make one of these, but I'm going to do one here. And then up here, I'll do I think that's good. So I'm going to do four flowers. So I'm going to start with the with the easier ones. Let's see. Let me get some watered down permanent red. A little bit of the matter lake. It's a little dark. If it's too dark, you can always rinse off your brush and pick some of the paint up. And now I want some darker paint. Here in the bottom. I rinse my brush off and just blend some of this. And do this one. And drop in that darker shade.
All right, now I'm going to do my light wash of paint on this one. going to add some deeper red here along the edges and the bottom. And now I'm going to sketch this one out. So we'll do a big, let's see, here's the center. Do a petal coming out this way. Make sure we have a little space there. And there. Okay. So now I'll do a light wash of color. a little more of the Matter Lake. There we go. So there's our lighter shade. While that's drying, I'm going to start working on the bottom part of the painting. So we're going to be working on these pods, and you can put in as many of you want. I've got plenty of space, so I'm going to put in a few. And they're basically just little stalks with these little round shapes on the top. So you can make them facing up, you can make them hang down. Um, so we're going to do a few of those. I'm going to do one here. I'll do one here. There. one down there. All right, so I've got those, the stems for those drawn in. And one here. Make it a little bit higher. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to be using the detail brush. And we're going to be using sap green. And I'm going to use it straight from this card because it does need to be pretty dark. So I'm going to start with the stems. 
see what this looks like. This brush doesn't hold a ton of paint, so I do have to keep going back to the card. Alright, so we've got that drawn in and now we'll do use the same green to fill this space in. And I want it to be a little bit darker on the bottom, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of Payne's Gray and just add a dot here. So it's darker at the base. And just do the same things with these other ones. For this one, I'm going to leave a space in the center. Oh, too much water. So there's a little space in the center and later on I'm going to come back with some red. So it looks like the little pot is splitting. making that darker and there's some gray on the bottom put down too much paint you can always dab it off and put a little bit too much gray and last one up here So these should be, 
Oh, they're not quite dry yet. So I'm going to dry those off. Add some darker red. I'm going to mark the center of my flower. I'm actually going to paint it first just so I know it's there and I can avoid it. some dark red. So I didn't leave as much of the layer underneath showing as I should have, but I think it's still going to look fine. I just got a little carried away. Okay, now we're going to grab our darker color and add some detail to these. So I've just got some of the Matter Lake Deep. This one needs to be a bit darker, so... Yours may be dark enough. I just can tell that this is not enough of a contrast between the bottom and the top, so I'm adding some more paint. And this is just water blending it out. So this one up here, we want the center to be darker. So 
So I've got dark paint there, and then I'm just going to use water up here. And drag the water down until I meet this darker shade, and then I can blend it all together. And I'm going to add my darker red along the edges too. And do the same, just add water. And just remember not to touch my brush to this center part. This side. And this is just water. Okay, while these are drying, I'm going to work on the stems for these two. So we're going to use the sap green. For this one, I'm going to add a little rounded shape here at the bottom before I start with the stem. And I'm going to use this detail brush. You can use the larger one, but you have to be careful to just use the end of it. And you may accidentally make the line too thick, so I'm going to use this one. And you can always make it thicker later on. And if you want, you can sketch it in with your pencil first. So this one will come down here. those these are still wet I'm going to go ahead and add the green it'll blend in a little bit with the red but I don't think it's going to make a huge difference so I'm going to draw this in first so this one's going to come down this way and this one will come down over here I'll start with this one. Then I'm going to make this little rounded shape here. Okay, it is a little bit wet here where the petal is, but it's not really blending with the green, so that's good. And last one.
And now this should be dry. So I'll add in my dots. Oops. It is not dry. So I'm going to dry this off. small brush and start adding dots. We're going to add lines. Okay. And I've got some gray left here, so I'm just going to add some to the top of the pods. Not all of them. Alright, this one. And add a lighter pink here. I'm also going to do that here. Okay. So that's it. I could probably add another flower up here, um, but that's optional. Um, oh, one thing I'm going to do is just add some details here. So this is a dark red that I had left over mixed with some of the gray, so it's pretty dark. So just some darker shading coming in from the in between the petals and along the edge here too. And here, and a little bit here. All right, so then at this point, we should be able to remove our tape and have a white edge. all done. Thanks for joining me for Paint Night. I look forward to seeing your paintings. Please check out our website for more information about our summer reading program which ends on July 31st. We'll have videos throughout the rest of the month and we're also still accepting adult summer reading challenge entries. See you next time!